everyone and welcome back to my channel with myself Isabella. Very excited to have you here today. Today we're going to be doing another Veganova walkthrough with my pre-graduation exam. So we've seen a lot of the graduation exam and today we're going to be looking at the pre-graduation. So this would be grade eight. Now when I was at the school we had nine grades which um, led me to have four years training. But then when I left, they reduced it back to eight years. So it was eight years for a long time. Then they put nine years on. And I was like, thank God, thank you so much. <laughs> Extra training. Um, and then they reduced it to um, eight years now. So technically speaking, this would have been my graduation year. But luckily, I had another year to go. Um, as you guys know from watching um, the Veganova walkthrough of... Um, the bar of this year. This was a very big deal for me um, because it was the first year that I was considered to be one of the best. It was also the first year um, my teacher, who was my new teacher that year, put me under the Vaganova portrait, which is where, um, you know, you could say the best in the class stands. Um, so it was a really significant year for me. And um, I was very nervous, but this was the year that I got extremely accustomed to practicing a lot and practicing every night. And it's where suddenly, um, I think after this exam, um, people looked at me in a different way and I was considered um, to be one of the best in the school. So it was very, very significant for me and um, a very important exam for me um, because it was sort of like make it or break it time for me. Um, so we've watched the bar already in a previous video, make sure you look back. And um, so today we're going to be looking at the center. And then like in other videos, we'll do jumps and point separately. So today we'll look at the center. So this um, adage is, has actually been shown on my Instagram. Look at Kyun Chan on the right there, her extensions. <laughs> Um, she is Korean, and um, but li has lived in Japan. Uh, beautiful extensions, very, very hard adage. Now this pirouette into a kate is, you know, extremely difficult to make look well. I'd like you to try that at home, there's a challenge for you. And then she made us hold that position in attitude for a nice long time. This was the small adage, so um, there's two adagios. This is the small one, <laughs> um, which obviously doesn't mean easier. Lots of tricky things in there. All right, so you might recognize this clip from Instagram. I think it's had several thousand views. That's hard to make look smooth against strong supporting leg. That was my not so good leg and I was my right leg up and I really hated putting my right leg up. I said, please, can we do the other side? And she was like, oh no, it's just, you know, it looks fine, it looks fine. I said, oh, please. <laughs> but she didn't listen. Okay, akate. You have to give right accent to get to the akate. It's not so slow, it's like accent and then open the leg whilst you're still getting there. This was like, show your attitude. Show your arabesque. This was quite a sad exam to look at, actually, because that's Brig Vadzer in the front there, who's passed away, and so has my other friend who's passed away, Gennady Zalitsky. I came out of the Fuete a bit sooner than anticipated, but the girls being very good followers, because I was the sort of leader of the group, just followed along, even though I was a bit early because basically I wasn't on balance. <laughs> I should have landed and then stepped, but but no. I think here I'm slightly panicking, like what's next? What, <laughs> what exercise are we doing? You know, when you just get the mind blanks a little bit. My soft ballet shoes at the time were by Sancha. Sancha was my thing. I had elastics on as well as ribbons. 
I did not leave anything up to chance. Now just watch how we use the head here, just in a simple tendu. Chin up. Nice and clean. Lots of balance. And stay. And stay. Lovely batus, use your head. You could say this exam was quite a big risk for my teacher. Um, but she obviously believed I could do it, which was amazing. I think it's the reason that I pushed myself so much was because somebody had the belief in me that I um, didn't up to that point or I didn't know was possible. I wanted it, but I didn't know it was possible that people saw that within me. So it really meant a great deal, a great deal. It's actually quite funny because um, checking the ballet shoes constantly. Look at me. Um, because in this exam, although this was the first year that I was given many opportunities, um, it's a very significant year because I'm actually given more solos in this exam than the next exam, purely because of the fact that I had um, my back fracture the next year. And so even though my teacher obviously wanted to give me solo opportunities, it was like, well, even though you've come back and you're still as good as you were, if not stronger, um, we can't put you on your own because you've been off six months. So I can't do that politically, literally. But anyway, I'm talking about that because I'm given this nice pirouette combination on my own now. She really brought out the confidence in me. Nice and clean. So basically, up until that point, so at this point I had focused a lot on my flexibility and although I was still doing exercises, so you can see I'm just slightly sunken in my lower back. So later, like the next year, I'm just a little bit more, although having gone through an awful injury, I'm, I'm much more pulled up and let's say, you know, protective of that area, so more supportive of it, which is generally what you want. You don't want to be sinking down into your lower back, you know. Um, but you can see like there when I go double or triple open, um, I'm kind of a little bit sunken down. So we want to be lifting up a little bit more all the time. Okay, so now we have fondues. And again in the front line, God, I definitely missed in my, <laughs> in the next year being in the front. <laughs> I was very upset actually, I remember. I was just like, you know, yeah, but the year before and it's not as important as this year, I was in the front all the time. And I hadn't even like gain the reputation yet you know politics people politics is not always fair is it yeah when I was practicing I went through so somebody actually asked me recently um, how do you you know how do you perfect things like quickly within a class for example like how do you improve things immediately and basically, everything that's in this exam, each step, each thing, I think I went through, you know, each individual exercise with each individual movement that was tricky, like every single evening. So the main, the main exercises that were difficult for me, I went through, oh, hopping there, <laughs> not balance. The main exercises I went through, um, or well, the exercises that were difficult for me, I did... Um, every single night um, so that it was automatic because guys just remember under pressure and you know under scrutiny with a lot of eyes on you you've got your adrenaline you've got your nerves and things don't go as well unless your muscles and you know um, your muscles and brain to muscle connection is automatic so that's what I was trying to do and aiming to achieve with my practice was to really understand the muscle memory and the muscle engagement required for each movement for each exercise so that I could just deliver it no problem under pressure and so 
the short answer is it's practice <laughs> and then things become more automatic because you've honed and trained that muscle memory so then when you need to improve something straight away the muscle memory and the muscle training is there but it, d it can't get there from nowhere it has to get there from a lot of practice So we have Grand Batman. I don't think I quite nailed this pirouette at the end. I was a bit unhappy with that. And she wanted us to open the chest on these steps back. Open the chest. These are very tilted. Grand Batmans. So someone commented once saying, their hips aren't square, it's not Alice second. It's like, no, those are Alice second, but the ones before are not Alice second. They're, they're much more tilted, almost like a balançoire to the side. So they're not supposed to be square. I think I did a, an extra hop here. Yeah, I was not on my leg. Naughty. <laughs> You could say this was like my first big performance, like of my life, because, you know, oh, wrong way. <laughs> the Royal Ballet School didn't like massively give me opportunity. And I don't think I would have gotten that opportunity at all. I don't think the thing is like Russians, like if they see potential, they are going to like risk everything and just put you in the part and hope for the best because they really believe in you. They kind of do that as well with like um, the company and things. So I really had to prove myself. Now we have the big adagio, which is really beautiful. So I'll be quiet a little bit for this. Really beautiful music. That's a hard promenade for the knees, the stability of the knee. I really practice this landing from this jump solid as you can see you know some people wobble and it's really effective if you can nail that landing she said sharako which means wide so you know um i had gave wide steps there you know for the step step to the front not underneath yourself that's something i always really hone in with my students is like you've got to use your space use your space i think now being a bit older and a bit more experienced i you know my arms are still not completely soft this year right so you can see sometimes um i'm doing that sort of i don't know i want to say english thing um <laughs> but thing that where it's not super um given attention to in other schools like I'm not bending from the elbows, I'm bending from the wrist. So although it's better, it's not quite there yet. So it makes me look a little bit stiff. I hadn't quite got control or understood how to use my limbs completely. But I'd say this was the first year that I was, this is my third year, but this was the first year that I was given really a huge amount of attention. And now I like to open the chest here, open the chest, lift it higher. E. And I really worked on my arms here. Shoulders down, arms behind you. Oh, and then we walk off. Oh my goodness, guys. And then we have jumps. So we'll do jumps in a separate video. Um, but yeah, really interesting. I, I, I haven't looked at that for a while and um, I can still see that just the elbows, you know, are just not um, bending so much. So, you know, now I would just with a bit more knowledge, I would rise up and then use my elbow more to extend, you know, rather than uh, 
it's it's basically not using your elbows so much, but it may, it would make me look much, much softer. So that's something I would try to bring to the table now. Um, but yeah, really, really interesting. Um, I hope you, you've enjoyed yourselves. Um, honestly, I've um, got some friends who are... Um, I have this prima ballerina friend who was a prima ballerina in the Royal Ballet in the 60s. And she's a family friend. And basically, you know, she used to watch my... Uh, she danced with Nureyev. She danced with um, many amazing people. And um, she's watched my Vagana for exams. And she is just like, I don't think there's any harder class exercises <laughs> than what goes on there. I mean, because you just don't see in a lot of schools um, that aren't Vagana for trained. Um, the Grand Plies in first to double pirouette, landing landing in Alice Second, Alice Second promenades, you know, Ronde Jambes on Demi Point. Like, do you know what I mean? It doesn't happen so much because they're so difficult. And I think a lot of schools shy away from it because potentially they think, oh, it's not even necessary. We don't even do that in the ballets. And it's true. We don't do that in the ballets. But um, it does prove how strong, how strong we are in our technique. Um, and it's just part of the part of the training and part of the technique, um, part of the Vaganova method. Don't forget, everyone, that this is also on a um, raked floor. So, you know, we're all on a slope. So we're doing lots of pirouettes and lots of promenades on a slope as well. But um, apart from that, you can see that um, I'm given a lot of solo roles and we'll be doing jumps and point as well um soon and again you'll see lots of solo opportunity there and um it just <laughs> changed a little bit for me in my final year despite me trying my absolute hardest um although I was still given solo opportunities in the exam which was and I was still put on the center of the center bar which was still you know a um huge achievement because I kind of thought oh you know, maybe they'll take me off completely. Maybe I won't be given any opportunity. Maybe I won't be seen at all. But luckily, um, that didn't um, change anything. And um, I had a bit of security in mind because um, the year before this exam, actually, so only on my second year, I had already toured with the Mikhailovsky Ballet because um, they asked me to join in their London tour. And they already offered me a job when I was 17. Um, and so even though I was like, oh, no, 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 no. Because I still felt extremely weak at that point. I'm just like, oh, no way. I need to. I'm not ready. I have so much more to learn, so much more skill. But I had that at the back of the back of my mind. Like, OK, worst case scenario, if it all goes wrong, I'm sure they'll accept me. And in the end, they did. <laughs> so that's where I end up in the end. Um, and yeah, they're super nice people. So anyway, guys. We'll talk more soon. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. Leave your comments down below. And just um, remember to subscribe and like the video because then we can reach more people and grow our Ballet with Isabella community. Because sometimes um, we watch videos, but we aren't actually subscribed. So make sure you're subscribed. Thank you so much. Bye for now.